Welcome to the voice of St. Anthony Parish from Alston, Massachusetts, right here on WROL 950 AM 100.3 FM. And you can also hear us at CatholicAudioMedia.com. That's CatholicAudioMedia.com. And don't forget to share your uh, love for our program if you're here on a regular basis by letting people know where they can find it and tell, telling people what you like or even don't like about the message you hear here. So you can check that out uh, and let them know. They can find us on the radio in the Boston area and also, well, in the Boston area, 9.50 a.m., 100.3 FM, and you can also hear us on Worldwide at WROL, uh, WROLradio.com, that's WROLradio.com, and we are on at 3 o'clock in the afternoon Eastern Time here in the United States. And by the way, if you'd like to also hear us after the program airs, you can hear us at CatholicAudioMedia.com. That's where it drops, CatholicAudioMedia.com. So let people know about that. And don't forget that on Mondays, we hear the homily that I did yesterday. In this case, we did uh, the day before. Here is the homily for the eighth Sunday of Ordinary Time. I focused on the second reading of uh, 1 Corinthians 15 the latter part where uh, St. Paul talks to us about having an understanding that in Christ there is no death. So let us refer everything over to St. Anthony Parish, where I recorded the homily at the 10 o'clock Mass yesterday morning. So our second reading is from the uh, 15th chapter of the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Uh, The beginning of the chapter, which is what we didn't hear, I think we heard it last week, uh, is the oldest eyewitness account of the resurrection of Jesus. And it's so powerful that St. Paul, he named some of the people who Jesus uh, appeared to, including himself, and then said he ultimately appeared to 500 people. And then he said, you know, how much we, this is why this is true. We believe this is true. And then he said, if Jesus did not resurrect from the dead, we are wasting our time. So it's a very powerful statement for St. Paul to make. And don't forget, he went to his death proclaiming that Jesus resurrected from the dead. But now we have the end of the chapter. And the end of the chapter, focusing on that, explains where our focus is. It is that in Christ we have defeat over death. And that's where he calls us to be focused on. We realize that all our hopes are in Christ. So we realize that ultimately the, the greatest thing we can find is eternal life. So focus there and you will realize that that's how you orient your life because ultimately he says, death, where is your sting? You probably heard the famous song, uh, Resucito, uh, la muerte, donde esta la muerte, death, where is death? Because in Christ we have eternal life. So it's important where St. Paul is calling us to do that. That means we want to be careful about being distracted by other things and we lose a sense of that because when we lose that focus, then we really don't have anything to teach others because we're not focused there. Now, needless to say, we've been through an interesting week in our world. And one of the interesting things I can think of is when the pandemic began, as many people will will tell you, including I'm sure everyone here, that you could rest assured there would be political changes by the end. And the reason is because any time you have a major world event like that, usually it follows political changes. And so we're starting to see some of that happen. And in light of that, during the pandemic, a lot of people were focused on something called the Great Reset, of which I know very little. But they were talking about, be careful, the Great Reset, this could be part of the Great Reset. Throughout the history of the human race, there's always been some form or another of great resets. And what it means is that certain people are going to take take over the world and they're going to change everything to benefit themselves. You find in the Psalms, I don't forget, I don't remember the exact Psalm, there is a statement there that says, there was a prayer there that says, God laughs at those people. They've been around forever. So we have people focused there. Be careful the Great Reset. Those people have been around forever. Focus on Christ because he is the one who is leading us to eternal life and he is greater to everything that can happen in the so-called Great Reset. And I probably told you everything that I know about it and that's about it. 
But we've also seen some other changes as well. And we see, of course, the war that broke out between Russia and the Ukraine. Now, one of the interesting things I noticed is there are people calling for uh, conversion of Russia, as Our Lady of Fatima did, said, you know, pray for the conversion. We have to pray for the conversion of Russia. One of the questions I want to ask is, what are we going to convert Russia to? Well, we can say, obviously, our faith, but that would be assume that there were no Christians in Russia. When I was producing the local broadcast of Vatican Radio, I ran a story of a woman who traveled a thousand miles after the fall of the Soviet, a thousand miles to be baptized in Moscow. Oh, there were Christians in Russia, I assure you. There were Catholics in Russia. But and Orthodox, obviously, of course. But we recognize that, that uh, people saying we need to call for the conversion of Russia. Russia, at the same time, has showed some of the elements of our culture and said, we don't want those here, and this is what we want to fight against. Well, okay, so we see that. But there's something else that needs to be looked at. And this is important, and we look at it within the context of the Bible, of the uh, Gospel. Don't forget the beam in your own eye or the log in, you know, the beam someone else has the log in your own eye. Something to keep in mind. Why is this war going on? Uh, because, and Russia's been saying this for a long time, NATO is right on the border of Russia. A matter, imagine this Moscow being right on the border of Canada, of, um, of North Dakota and Mexico. And here's the problem. There are nuclear weapons in Eastern Europe that are part of NATO. Let me give you a little story about nuclear weapons. When I was in the Navy, they asked me if I wanted to work with them, and I said no. And they said, why not? I said, I don't want to press the button, have five people left in the entire universe, and they all look at me and say, that's the one that pressed the button. And the person who responded, good Catholic, going to church every Sunday, the whole bit, said to me, these are not large nuclear weapons. They're only the size of the Hiroshima bomb. To which point I said, sir, that killed 100,000 people in four seconds. No. Something to think about. Maybe instead of saying, let's stop Russia, which obviously we want to stop Russia, we can say, and by the way, why don't we get our nuclear weapons out of Eastern Europe? We still have weapons. We just don't need nuclear weapons there, and they don't need nuclear weapons on our border. That might be a change. Something to look at, because where is our focus? Our focus really isn't there. It's we want to do everything we can to let people know that we believe in Christ, in the eternal Christ, in the one who's leading us to eternity, and that's one powerful thing we can do that we say this is what we believe in we believe in a way of living that changes people's lives and we do that by focusing on the one who calls us to live our life in a different way in such a way that people understand things that that there is this Jesus that is eternal life and we are so focused on him that that's the way we live our lives and so that's a powerful moment that we look at that One of the things that supposedly is part of the Great Reset is to silence the voice of the Catholic Church. There's actually political movements all over the world. We want to silence the voice of the Catholic Church. Okay. Well, you can see what happens when you silence the voice of the Catholic Church. We've got to be a strong voice for what Christ is leading us to so that we can go there. Now, we are on the border of Lent. And in that, as we focus on Lent, this is a good time for us to look at those words, those understandings, and ask the Lord to lead us to be deeper in him, to ask the Lord to show us how to follow that path, to ask the Lord to show us what changes we need to make in our lives and to show us how we can grow in holiness. Because ultimately, as Catholics, as always, our role is to be prophets. And we are prophets simply by living our lives, as I've said you before just by doing what you were doing right now you are living a prophetic message because you're saying there's something important here and that's why I'm here so that's powerful but our message has to be such also we want to build on that so we can strengthen it and so that people can go out and understand that there's something powerful here the Pope broke all protocol, and he went and visited each of the embassies in Rome, just walked in and said, we need to discuss Ukraine and Russia. 
because he isn't going to play the protocol. He's going to walk in and say, let's start talking. And so he did. And with ourselves, we want to be so rooted in Christ. We're not focused on protocol. We're focused on let's start showing people more and more that Christ is alive. You're listening to the voice of St. Anthony Parish from Alston, Massachusetts, right here on WROL, 9.50 a.m., 100.3 FM. And you can also hear us at CatholicAudioMedia.com. That's CatholicAudioMedia.com. We'll be right back right after this. I want to call your attention to Catholic TV, which offers great faith-filled, family-friendly programming 24 hours a day. You can find your cable channel at www.getcatholictv.com. And you can watch online on the free apps or check out the YouTube channel. Daily Mass, Rosaries, the Divine Mercy Chaplet, and the Our Lady of Perpetual Help Novena are all available online and on demand. Check out catholictv.com. Have you ever wanted to read the Bible but didn't know which readings to check out? Well, how about looking at the church's daily readings? You can find them at the website of the United States Conference of Catholic Bishops. Just go to bible.usccb.org and click on the date that pops up on that page. There are other options on that page as well. That is bible.usccb.org and click on the date and you will see the daily readings for your own prayer and study of the Bible. This is a prayerful tip from St. Anthony Parish in Alston, Massachusetts. And don't forget our own website, catholicaudiomedia.com. That's catholicaudiomedia.com. You can check out our website. You can check out the archives of the show. You can uh, check out our Substack newsletter where I put homilies and uh, oftentimes other form of content. Uh, you can also uh, listen to some bonus. We have bonus content this week over at the um, catholicaudiomedia.com. And you can also connect there to some of our other platforms for listening to uh, the, the podcast and broadcast. Uh, the platforms uh, are many, but some of them we have connected there are Amazon Music for the podcast section. And also uh, there's iHeartRadio. And our home platform, by the way, is Podbean. That's where you'll find us. So our home plat plat form is Podbean, so you can check out all that. And if you go to the podcast uh, video section, you'll see another podcast we have, which is the interviews I've done in their fullness uh, that they are there in another channel we have there. So we have that. You can donate to the show if you'd like. You can send us feedback if you'd like, and we'd really appreciate that if you would. You can do all kinds of things over there at catholicaudiomedia.com. That's catholicaudiomedia.com. In the meantime, we'll be back tomorrow at the same time. We're going to play you the last of our radio episodes of my interview with Mark Shea, and then we're going to get ready for uh, Ash Wednesday the following day. So it'll be an interesting week. So we will see you tomorrow at the same time. Three o'clock in the afternoon on WROL. In Cristo vivimos.